Morning, kiddos. Um, today on the EPA 608, we're going to talk about the service port valves and the king valve. <clears throat> service port valves are usually on larger systems, on compressors that can be uh, worked on or repaired. Uh, so a lot of times uh, you won't see service port uh, valves on split systems like at your home. These are more on attached to commercial type compressors that can be rebuilt, all right? Usually the compressors you have at your home for comfort cooling and things like that, usually you have a sealed compressor, which means you can't access it. So if the compressor goes bad, you have to take that compressor out and put a new one in it. But larger systems like you use in industrial or commercial, uh, those compressors can be uh, repaired, um, replaced, isolated, all kinds of things you can do with those compressors. They're just like a, a car, a, a small engine or a large engine, uh, and it can be rebuilt by re replacing the valves, the gaskets, the, the internal components of a compressor. So, but they ask you questions in the test about this service port, and one of the things they ask you about is if you, for instance, right now I have the, if you see right here, the compressor and the system, this is back seated. It's all the way up here. So that means is if you was to put your gauges, connect your, connect your gauges, the gauges at this port, you would not get nothing. If the system is charged and running, you wouldn't see what the how much refrigerant you would in it because this valve right here is back seated. All right, so it's basically in the off position. So if you wanted to see what the, what the system is doing when it's running, in this position you cannot see it. Okay. Um, if you wanted to monitor the system with your gauges, you would literally have to move the the valve halfway, kind of halfway here, so that uh, it can sense the pressure, so it can sense the pressure through here so you can get it, and it also, and everything else is working. There's a couple of things you need to know. You should never start the compressor with the valve in this position. Do not start compressor in this position. This is bad. What happens is the compressor turns on and it's up against the valve. So what, they, what can happen is you can pop the gaskets or cause the compressor to I mean, overheat. There's a lot of things that can happen when you do that. It's just not a, it's, it's, it's a, it's extremely a bad thing to start it when the valve is uh, seated forward all the way. Um, if you want to monitor the system, you just turn the valve until your gauges reaches the pressure and slightly a little past that. So that way you make sure you don't put the valve uh, all the way forward. That would be a bad thing because that compressor trying to run, it goes up against the wall. And that compressor is pretty powerful. So something's going to give. Either the compressor gas is going to give, or that valve is going to give, the line is going to give, something's going to give because it's going to keep building pressure and it's going to be really fast and then it's going to pop. So this is a no no. All the way forward is a no no. Bad. Full, fully forward is bad. Now, we do that when the system's off. When we're trying to isolate the compressor, that's how you would isolate the compressor. You would have this valve making a mess of this a little bit, but if I need to work on that compressor and I need to do some repairs to it, then I would uh, set the valve all the way forward. Because what it did is it just isolated the 
the compressor from the line. So the only thing that has access to the compressor is this service port right here. So the refrigerator that's still in the compressor, I can, can recover the, what's ever in the compressor. I don't have to worry about what's in the in the system because it's been isolated. It's been sealed off. So if I wanted to take the compressor off, repair it, do some work to it, I can seat that all the way forward and then recover the refrigerant in the system, I mean in the in inside the compressor. And then I can disconnect. There's a bolt or a thread connection right here that I can undo and take the compressor off and I can do all the repairs and everything. So when I put the compressor back in the system, all I got to do is recover this area, the compressor in this area and get it evacuated and then I can reopen that up and allow the refrigerant back in the system so the compressor is ready to run. Now I may have to add a little bit more refrigerant into it because uh, there might be some losses possibly but the, that's the worst case scenario. But I'm back and running again. I don't have to uh, put a vacuum pumps on or I, or I don't have to open this up or cover all the refrigerant out and on that. All I had to do was remove the refrigerant from the compressor and leave the refrigerant that I have here. Matter of fact, I can pump down the system and get the refrigerant out of here. So what would, what would I do? I would take the valve, put it in this position slightly. Don't don't seat it forward all the way. Have it open. Have my gauges on there. And then I would turn on the system. Watch my low side gauges. Low side gauges. Where zero is, and this is a back. And then I would turn the system on. Uh, turn on. Uh, turn on the system, or uh, and, sh and shut off the um, the um, at the receiver. Shut it off at the receiver. Turn on the compressor. The compressor on the discharge line will pump all the refrigerant into the receiver. Once we get down to zero. On the low side gauges at this point, on the low side, when I get down to zero, I will shut that valve off and shut that compressor off pretty fast. Once I've done that, I have pumped down the system. Now the compressor or any of that has refrigerant in it. So now I can immediately, because I'm at zero, I can immediately disconnect the compressor and work on it and repair it. And then I don't have to worry about recovering the refrigerant because I use the compressor. But that's if the compressor is operating. Now, if the compressor is not operating, then no, you're not going to be able to pump it down. But a lot of times you're just servicing the compressor and you need to like change some gases because you got a slight leak or you have some oil problems or something like that. Then you can pump it down into the system. And then once you once you got it down to zero, you would seat this valve forward all the way shutting it off and then shut the compressor off immediately. A lot of times you can shut the compressor off and it'll hold. If your valves are working good, it'll hold that vacuum so you can actually turn it off. Um, so if you've been doing this a while and you may understand what's going on, then maybe you can leave it running a little bit. But if not, get it down to zero or just a little bit past zero and then shut the compressor off and then just and be ready to uh, seat that forward all the way that way and then isolate the compressor and then now Dave Government, you don't now you can just open open up the compressor to the to the atmosphere take take it off do the repairs to it put it back on and then all you got to do is back uh dehydrate and evacuate the system i mean uh, uh dehydrate the system and and put the system in the vacuum and remove all the non condensables and then while you're doing that, remember, every time you evacuate, you want to check to see if you have any leaks or any problems. So what you do is you let it stabilize. So you evacuate, wait five minutes, and watch your gauges and make sure when you're, if, if you're in a good back, you should be close to 30. So sit there and watch it. Make sure your needle doesn't move up to zero. If it does, then you've got a leak somewhere. Something's not working. And my first guess would be first to check your gauges. And if you watched the previous va uh, uh, video about the vacuum pump and all that, I talked about that. But I would check that first, and then I would check my seals to the compressor. 
And then if that's not, then whatever you just did onto the, the compressor, you might want to double check again and make sure you tighten the bolts down or whatever. But um, you need to wait five minutes to make sure that you're holding that vacuum. You need to, matter of fact, when you're when you open it up to the system and you're before you put refrigerant in, you need to let that system run about five minutes and stabilize. You need to always stabilize before you react to whatever you're reading off the gauges. It needs to stabilize. So if you see any test questions to ask that says wait and and let it settle or stabilize or give it five minutes or give it some time to uh, to uh, stabilize in the system, that would probably most likely be the right answer if it pertains to the question that they provide. Okay? So you need to always be patient. Take your time and do it right. Because a lot of times, a lot of issues can be avoided if you just do that, just by waiting and watching the gauges and let them settle. Because if you just go by what's going on while the uh, after you just charged it, then you haven't given this time for this, the refrigerant to get throughout the system and equalize. So uh, the service port for uh, commercial type systems. These are good valves to have because it allows you to do things. You can isolate the system, uh, the compressor, and so on. It's um, it's a good function, especially on compressors that can be repairable, uh, serviced, and uh, changed out. Matter of fact, if you needed to put a bigger compressor on, uh, real easy. Pump down the system, and pump the refrigerant into the receiver. Shut the valve off just past the receiver and pump all the refrigerant into the receiver. And then once you get down to move just slightly below zero, shut that valve off, seat it all the way forward. And then you can take break, break it, open it up to the atmosphere, take the compressor off and get the bigger compressor and do whatever you need to do, put it on there. And then uh, dehydrate and remove all the non condensables and get it down to the, uh, like, try to get as close as you can, like 500 microns or uh, 30 inches of mercury or vacuum, whichever how you want to say it. And then voila, you're done and ready to go. So if you forward seat it all the way, you isolated the compressor from the system, which is a bad thing for you to start the compressor up. Right, and you should never start the compressor on a vacuum or with the valve all the way forward seated because those two things can damage that compressor. Hopefully, I that you might see that on test questions because they've been on the test questions. So, if it says, uh, should you start a compressor? I mean, if it's asking which is if they give you answers that says what is bad to a compressor, starting it up on a back is bad, or starting it up when the valve is fully forward, seated forward all the way. Back seated is you cannot see what's going on in the system. If you go halfway, you can see what's going on. The compressor can keep running. But if you seat it all the way forward, the compressor can't run. You're not supposed to have the compressor running. That will damage that compressor. So with the with the valve all the way forward, don't start the compressor. With the um, with it in a vacuum, never start the compressor. Right, and that's usually what they're talking about is a serviceable uh, compressor service port valve. All right, not a king valve, but a service port valve. Those are usually on industrial and commercial systems, and the compressors can be repairable. The ones you have at your home again is comfort cooling, which cannot be serviced. All right, uh, I mean the compressors cannot be serviced because they're sealed, they're hermetically sealed. That means everything's on the inside, and you would have to cut it open with a grinder or something. There's no bolts in them. All right, so service port, uh, fully forward, isolates the compressor from the system and where you can, uh, if there's any refrigerant in there, you can recover it. That's usually because the compressor is inoperable, so you can't pump it down. But if the compressor is operable, you need to pump it down into the receiver. All right, but if not, then you can isolate the compressor, evacuate just the area where the compressor is, you can recover the refrigerant from there. And then you can isolate it, fix it, make it, get it working again, or put a new one on there, put it back into the system, uh, dehydrate and remove all the non condensables and bring it down to the vacuum level that you need to reach, which is usually as close as you can to 500 microns or 30 inches of mercury in, uh, vacuum. And then uh, open it up slightly because you want to watch it as the refrigerant goes into the compressor. 
and then once it equalizes, then you can turn on the system and then wait a little bit. Well, first, after you put it in the vacuum and remove all the non conditions, remember you need to wait at least five minutes or more, right? You need to at least wait, give it weight, and let it stabilize. Once you, uh, once you wait for five minutes and you keep you hold the vacuum, the deep vacuum, the 500 microns, as close as you can to that, or 30 inches of mercury, as long as the needle doesn't move within that five minutes, then you can open it up and let the refrigerant equalize. Once it equalizes, once you gauges and when there's, there's no more moving with the needle, then you can turn, if you got enough refrigerant in there, then you can turn it on. And then watch your gauges for about five or ten minutes and make sure and let the system stabilize, equalize and stabilize. And then if it looks like you're low, then you can charge it. But until then, don't immediately put refrigerant in it because you got because you can't get an accurate reading while it's stabilizing. Okay. But I need to go over that one more time. On the when you fully seat it, and if the compressor is inoperable. Then you have to recover the refrigerant in the compressor. Once you've done that, you get it uh, to zero or below or whatever the uh, the, the uh, recovery vac uh, rate is, vacuum rate is. So, for instance, if you it's a uh, high pressure refrigerant and it's less than 200, then you need to get that to zero. But if it's more than 200, you need to get that to 10. So you got to get it down to 10. Once you've got recovered and got it down to a, a, a 10, then you can open up the system, repair the compressor, and then put the compressor or, or put the new one or the repair compressor on there. Then get your vacuum pump and evacuate, do a triple evacuation and pull out all the, the air the non condensables moisture out of it and bring it down to as close as you can to 500 microns or 30 inches of mercury and then pressure it up again with nitrogen and then pull it out again to that level again and then put it back in one more time do it three times one more time because you're trying to make sure you get all the non conditionals and moisture and everything out of the system and then get it on the third time get it back down as close as you can to 500 microns or 30 inches of mercury once you've got it in that vacuum set there and wait about five minutes and watch that needle and make sure that needle stays there and does not move if it doesn't move towards zero and it stays at, it stabilizes at wherever you were trying to achieve then you can open because you're fully for you're seated fully forward now come a halfway back and then let it equalize don't turn nothing on until it equalizes until that gauge the pressure gauges get up to a point where the needle's not moving anymore once it's done that and you have enough refrigerant in there you can turn on the system and let it run for a while for five minutes or longer to let the system stabilize while it's running and then once it's running and you see that the needle is, is stabilizing not fluctuating or anything like that then at that time if you determine if you need refrigerant then you can add some then when you add some refrigerant into the system for a little bit until you see your gauges get too close to where you want to be then shut the, the refrigerant off again and let it stabilize again and watch it run for five or ten minutes and then you, so you can check to see if the refrigerant is where it needs to be but don't just immediately put close the valve and see where it's at and then put some more in it because that's not good you need to let it settle first because sometimes it, it, it fluctuates and it may be where it needs to be Matter of fact, the uh, statistic says that majority of the time technicians you usually overcharge the system, and which is not a good idea. Okay, about about seventy to eighty percent of the time they overcharge it. So we need to be careful. So by doing that is being patient, being waiting. In every step that you do, you need to be patient and 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 pause for a moment to make sure everything is stable and everything when you get a reading. You need to always have a clear reading when you're doing it. Again, uh, seat it up forward, never start a compressor on that. Also, 
never start a compressor when you're in some deep vacuum, right? If you want to see what's going on, just slightly go past the back seat. When you back seat all the way, you shut off this port and then it allows you to remove the gauges. Okay. Always use manual or auto sealed uh, uh, connection, refrigerant line connections to your service ports because you don't want to lose any refrigerant or venting into the air. So you need low loss fittings or manual low loss fittings that you can manually do it or it's, it automatically does it. It has a shrink about it. Okay. And you may see that on the test question. Okay. And you'll have this uh, valve on both sides of the compressor. So what I just told you about the low side here on the valve, you need to, you need to do it on both sides of the system, the high side and the low side at the same time when you're doing all this. So when you seat it forward all the way, you need to seat it forward on the high side all the way and then evacuate the system. And then when you open up the valves, both valves need to be open to the same position because you need to monitor both the low and high side of the system when you're charging or checking the system to see if it's where it needs to be. So I just went over this just for one valve, but you actually you have to do this process for both valves at the same time. All right, that is the service port valve. Now let's talk about the king valve. The king valve is hooked to a couple of it's hooked to the comfort control valve. It's used to open up one time. It's not designed to be a metering device. So the reason why it's called a king valve because you got a cap. Go to the line here, and it, sometimes it goes down or it goes sideways, right? And you have a valve right here that goes up, okay? And it's underneath the cap. There's, this is a cap. It's designed to either be all the way closed or all the way open. It's not used to um, regulate the refrigerant or the, the flow of the system. Really. So when you get it, it's in, when you buy a system and it's got refrigerant already pre-charged in it, it's in this position. It's in an awfully off position. The, what you do is you have a service port on here that you can hook up to, which actually allows um, the you can access uh, the lines, but you can't access the uh, the system. Okay, I'm drawing this incorrectly. Let me recall this. A bit. I'll do this one. Let me do this right. All right. So service port. Let me draw it this way. So the valve is seated all the way down. This is going to um, this is going to the condensing unit. This is the unit outside. Okay, so the valve, when the, the king valve is all the way down. The reason why it's called king valve because that, that cap on top looks like a crown. So that's why they call it a king valve. So this is always seated all the way forward. So the valve has got the unit, the refrigerant that's pre-charged into the condenser. It's sealed off. Okay. You can't access the condensing unit coil with the valve in this position. And remember, it's only designed to be all the way open or all the way closed. It's not used to meter any flow or refrigerant, okay? So right now, if you put your gauges on here, if you put your gauges here, you would read nothing. You would just read what's into the system. This goes to the system inside the house, the evaporator coil. So this is going to the system. So you put your gauges on there, you'll read what's ever in the system itself, but not in the condensing unit. The condensing unit has been isolated, but you can read the pressures and everything that runs all the way to the, to the coil inside the house. So um, this is basically when you're getting ready to, to, to charge it, after you raise the lines to the condensing unit, to the, to the system out there, okay? Um, so, um, so when you, 
there's an Allen wrench set inside this cap. Take this cap off inside there. You'll see a little Allen wrench looking shape. <clears throat> then you would take it and open it all the way up. But you would not do that until you uh, dehydrated and evacuated all the non conducibles You did a triple evacuation on that to make sure the system is ready to receive refrigerant. And sometimes they come pre-charged. There's times they, they don't. You just need to find out. And if they're not, they've, they've been pre-charged with nitrogen. So if it's got nitrogen, you need to definitely get that out of there. So you would literally, if it's not pre-charged, then you can literally open up the king valve, hook up to the service port, and then you can dehydrate and evacuate the whole system at the same time. Okay? But if it's pre-charged refrigerant, you won't have to dehydrate or evacuate the system on this it's already been done it's been done so all you got to do is do take care of what's from this point to through the system and back is all you got to evacuate or dehydrate the system and make sure all the non-condensables and tri triple evacuate on that right and also you need to do that wait time remember patience wait five minutes after you evacuated to make sure there's no leaks, make sure your brazing joints and everything sealed up. So watch your needle and make sure it doesn't move and it stays in the, the back that you set it on. And then wait a little bit, make sure it stays there. That way you make sure there's no leaks in it, okay? Uh, prior to that, you should have uh, pressured it up with some nitrogen and watched the gauges for a little bit, like five minutes or more to see if it holds uh, positive pressure and then you need to check to see if it holds a negative pressure for about five minutes so you're double checking yourself to make sure there's no leaks because what's the main reason for EPA we don't want to vent refrigerant especially regulated refrigerant to the air or the atmosphere okay so again once you've done the triple evacuation and you and you made sure there's no leaks in it then you can upseat that all the way allow the refrigerant to go into the system and again wait let it pressurize, that can equalize before you start the compressor. And again, never start the compressor with that in that position. Bad, bad. Do not start it in that position. It needs to be open. Once it equalizes, and you can turn it on and then let it equalize before you really look at how much refrigerant you have. Once you got it going, then you can check your gauges after it stabilizes and see if you need to add more refrigerant. And then if you do have to add more refrigerant, add a little bit, stop it, let it run for a little bit, check the check your charge again. Now, if you need some more, then keep adding. But if every now and then, just put a little bit in at a time, right? That way you can make sure that there's no, uh, that you don't overcharge it. And again, like I said, statistics says the majority of the time, uh, technicians overcharge the system. So the reason why is they just, they, they get in a rush, okay? That's a king valve. And again, it's not used to meter like a service port valve. Service port valves, you can use it to check your system. You can isolate things and stuff like that. But a king valve is not designed to do that. Once you open it up, you should not use that king valve anymore. Because if you do, there's a Teflon gasket in there that can be damaged. Right? And if it does, it'll leak out through this cap. And that's another thing you need to make sure is you seal off that cap really well. Because that cap also prevents any losses as well. Right? Hopefully that answered your questions about the service port valves and the waiting time um, and low loss fittings. Remember, you always use low loss fittings when you're accessing the system, uh, either manually or self sealing, which would use a straighter valve. And on these service port ends, they have straighter valves as well, and a lot of times that's where they leak. So a lot of times I usually take some spit, put on there, see if it bubbles up. If it does, then that straighter valve is bad and you may need to replace it. You say, well, do I have to pump it down or evacuate it again to get it back to where or recover it so I can fix it? No. Actually, they have a tool that you can put over it and actually remove the service port valve and put a new one in it without uh, uh, allowing any loss of refrigerant or anything like that. It's a neat little tool. And uh, when you get in this profession, you'll see that tool. And then, uh, if you have any questions, just email me and I'll send you information over that tool. Okay. So King Battle, I mean, straight valves can be replaced in a system without recovering or removing the refrigerant. All right. Hopefully this answered your question. Again, do you need any more information? Just email me. Y'all have a good one.